I'm uh, Gail Safian. I'm the president of the Durand Heaven House, which is Maplewood's historic house museum over on Ridgewood Road. And after this wonderful program here, we'll invite you up to the Durand Heaven House. It's right opposite Bolden School uh, for uh, refreshments and, and more chance to talk to each other. So I'm so thrilled today that we have the uh, chance to honor Myla J.C., who has served our community and our state and our country for so many years, and she's now has the time to come and speak with us. <laughs> and on our esteemed panel today will be Garnett Hall, who is now the new New Jersey yeah. Assemblyman. Nancy Adams, our new mayor. Yeah. Ellen Davenport, who is yeah. needs no introduction. Our very first woman mayor, and I'm glad that she was the first and not the only. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I thank you all for coming, and without further ado, let's. Uh,
up. Yeah. <laughs> During a trip to six West African countries on a grant from my college, I was fortunate to meet a public health nurse whose observations about serving the needs of villagers, especially women and children, was very different from what everyone else was seeing. In fact, uh, on one of our first stops, which was in Senegal, uh, you know, people were talking about how interesting it was and how cool it was that so many children had red hair, mm -hmm. when in fact, that was indication of vitamin dis deficiency. Mm -hmm. You know, so I found myself uh, almost at her side the entire time because her point of view was so different. And she talked to me about nursing and I thought, okay. And when I came back, that's what I did. I found a nursing program that granted a master's in two years if you had a, an undergraduate degree. And during rotations, I quickly learned Hospital-based nursing was not for me. <laughs> Public health, which involved both teaching and patient care, was a perfect fit. I worked as a visiting nurse in East Orange. I worked for the health department, where I was able to visit patients in their homes as well as run clinics. Being across the street from East Orange High School, I was able to work with young women and impart the need for self-care and access to contraception to prevent unwanted consequences. This experience, along with decades of volunteering with La Leche League, and I'm really excited that Emily Pontius is here. She was one of the pe people that worked with me how many years ago? I mean, 30 years ago. Um, to start more La Leche League groups, support groups, to promote breastfeeding and infant and maternal health. But decades later, I was a lead sponsor in the fight for New Jersey's Reproductive Freedom of Choice Law, signed by Governor Murphy a mere six months following the reversal of Roe v. Wade. The PTA, I grew up in a home where education was always a top priority. Each of my 10 siblings <coughs> graduated from college, except for my brother Moose, who had Down syndrome, and some of you may have met Moose when he lived here in South Orange. Um, yet our mother made certain that he attended appropriate cr programs and l lived surrounded by family. When our three children came along, understanding the importance of parental involvement in schools, I became an advocate for my children and their classmates. I worked with many others to make participation easier for working parents by alternating meetings between daytime and evenings. This service led to my being asked to serve the remainder of the term on the South Orange Maplewood Board of Education when my youngest was in high school. I served three time, three terms, the hardest work I have ever done. <laughs> While there are those who use boards, Board of Ed as a stepping stone to higher office, I fully expected my time on the board to be the capstone of my public service. In what was one of the biggest surprises of my life, in September 2007, I'm looking at you, Mary, I was asked by Governor Cody and Assemblyman John McCann to serve with them representing the 27th District in the legislature when a vacancy occurred. To put this in perspective, Cody had left office, had just left office as uh, one of New Jersey's most popular governors less than two years earlier and was the current Senate president. In other words, he was a big cojone. Yeah. <laughs> to further clarify, there were literally dozens of people seeking the position, and I was not one of them. The thought had simply never occurred to me. When Gov called and asked me to meet the next day, I said, sure. When he asked for a resume, I told him I didn't have one. He said, make a list and wear a suit. Neither he nor John knew that I spent the following morning buying a soup. <laughs> Following a conversation that lasted less than an hour, Gov looked at me and said, well, and I said, well, what? He asked, are you in? And I said, in what? And he said, um, and I said, well, I need some time to think about it. And both he and John were surprised by that. In typical Gov fashion, he asked why, followed by, call me tomorrow morning and let me know. The next morning, he called and I, I became a candidate. Two weeks after the Assemblywoman Select 
and two days after being elected, I was sworn into office to complete the term. Never did I imagine on that afternoon in West Orange that I was about to embark upon 16 years of service as a member of the Assembly, or that I would be the lead sponsor of more than 100 bills signed into law by four governors. <laughs> Members of the legislature serve on various committees. Mine were education, higher education, housing, and the Joint Committee on the Public Schools, because where you live determines where you go to school. This is, continues to be a huge issue for us, and that's another conversation. I came to the, um, I, I was vice chair of all but higher ed, which I chaired for more than 10 years. I came to the assembly with a passion for sound education policy because one's education is a continuum that begins in preschool and extends through K-12 to college and career pathways. At the very beginning of my term, I spent 17 hours over the course of two days. Mary thought I was crazy. I was afraid she was going to quit on me. Uh, listening to testimony about whether to implement the school funding formula. This year's proposed budget gives Maplewood South Orange an additional $1 million, but we are still searching for better answers. <laughs> I sponsored the first bill in the legislature, which ultimately led to the expansion of high quality universal pre-K, and I'm so excited to tell you that my grandchild number six is currently benefiting from that program in Jersey City. It took a long time. Um, okay. Educational inequities and substandard housing go hand in hand, and this reality led to my becoming a staunch advocate for safe, affordable, for safe, affordable housing for all New Jerseyans, foreclosure prevention and building strong, safe communities through land banking were just some of my contribution to the housing landscape. It had been my hope to become chair of the Education Committee, and although I was, although I was vice chair, the powers that be in the form of the speaker appointed me chair of higher education instead. I only learned later what an opportunity it presented. We have made critically important, significant strides in college affordability and accessibility, workforce development, apprenticeships, and addressing the student debt crisis here in New Jersey. We have enhanced opportunities for degree attainment and career pathways to help students accomplish this without the crippling debt that, together with skyrocketing housing prices, has prevented so many from attaining the dream of home ownership. I've seen a dramatic increase in the number of women and minorities serving in the legislature since 2007. Yes, that's <laughs> Just as I have watched more and more women being elected to town councils all over the state, I tell women interested in public service, don't wait to be asked. And don't question your ability to succeed. When opportunities present, say yes. And then look for people who've already done it, women, and we will help you. While public service involves tremendous work, it is rewarding on so many levels. Governor John Corzine, <coughs> headlined a community coalition on race gala right here at the Woodland because I asked him to come. I wanted him to see the work being done, he, being done here to promote equity and inclusion as a model for the state. Today, the CCR is stronger and more vibrant than ever. Thank you, Carol, and other members, Nancy, uh, for the work that you're continuing to do. Governor John Corzine also headlined a community coalition on race gala right here at the Woodline, Woodland because I asked him to come. I wanted him to see the work being done 
to promote equity and inclusion. Today, the CCR is stronger and more vibrant than ever. Service, service as a legislator has provided memorable experiences. I was chosen to be a Barack Obama delegate to the 2008 Democratic National Committee um, convention in Denver and watched him accept our par party's nomination to become President of the United States. I was the first woman elected official to ask then Ambassador Phil Murphy to be a special guest at an event we held at Orange Lawn and the first statewide woman elected state elected official to endorse Mikey Sherrill for Congress. During the COVID pandemic, when vaccine appointments were scarce, we helped, and when I say we, I mean Mary and Elijah, thank you, my chief of staff and my legislative director at the time, um, gained access to uh, medications, vaccines, etc. Our efforts to enshrine reproductive rights in statute resulted in invitations to attend a round table with Vice President Harris in, in Atlantic City and a Christmas party at the White House with President Biden last year. Mary has a great picture. I took it. <laughs> my life has been enriched beyond measure by my service. I am fortunate to have had the unwavering support of my husband, Neil. Thank you, Neil. Um, and our three children, Neil, Rena, and Kyle. I know that I saw Neil walk in, I saw Rena walk in. And I, is that Julia with you, Rena? Thank you. <laughs> Our seven grandchildren were all born after I took office. When I announced my retirement last fall, I explained that I wanted to spend more time with my family, especially my now 99-year-old mother who lives with us and whom you have all heard me speak of often. I cannot begin to tell you how many colleagues, lobbyists, and Trenton friends told me that of the innumerable times a member le left the legislature ostensibly to spend more time with family, mine was the only time they knew it was true. <laughs> I commend every woman who has made community and public service a part of her life and remind you that it is possible to have it all, just not necessarily all at the same time. <laughs> Say yes to opportunity and no to self-doubt. Thank you very, very much.